It's interesting how both fans and haters of Apple products generally tend to agree that these products have both a great build quality and excellent software, but that they cost a ton of money. The thing that distinguishes the fans from the haters is mostly the degree to which they think these products are overpriced and whether they're willing to cough up the money for them. Of course, this is just a generalization. We have a whole video where we compare iPhones and Androids point by point, so give that a watch if you want to know our detailed opinion on this. But the generalization still holds water. Apple products are great, but not everyone uses them because they're expensive. So how is it then that Macs are unanimously considered a laughingstock in the gaming community? Are they really bad for gaming, or are they just cool to hate? To answer this, we're going to have to take a couple of things into consideration. So without any further ado, let's begin. We'll start by giving an overview of different types of Macs that are available. We can divide them into two categories, the MacBooks, which are laptop Macs, and the regular desktop Macs. Additionally, there are three types of MacBooks, the traditional MacBook, the more affordable MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro, which is pretty self-explanatory. Desktop Macs, on the other hand, come in the form of the Mac and the iMac. The standard Mac is essentially just a computer case packed with all the necessary goodies. You buy it, you're connected to an external display, and you're good to go. Now in the case of iMacs, the monitor is the device, and all the components are fit into the monitor's body. You can think of it like a really jacked out iPhone or just a computer case that somehow doubles as a display. There are other subcategories as well, like iMac Pros, Mac Pros, Mac Minis, but these are all beside the point. So let's instead look at the hardware. Ask any Android user why they prefer it to the iPhone and chances are they'll bring up the iPhone's subpar hardware. To which the iPhone user will say, yes, but the software is so good, it more than makes up for it. And we're inclined to agree with this when it comes to smartphones. But gaming is a whole different story. It's extremely hardware focused and more specifically, it's graphics card focused. If you want to see a chart with all the hardware specifications for all the Mac models, you can check it out on our website and the link is in the description. But overall, things are not looking good if you're a gamer. The processors are pretty good, except in the case of MacBooks where only the MacBook Pro has a quad-core processor. The displays are amazing, with all models except the MacBook Air relying on the Retina technology and packing resolutions higher than 1080p. RAM and storage options are also good in the case of MacBooks and even better when it comes to the desktop versions. But, and we cannot overstress this enough, the graphics are horrendous. In layman's terms, they suck. The majority of the models rely on underpowered integrated Intel graphics cards. Having integrated graphics for gaming isn't ideal even with the best APUs, and these are far from the best. The iMacs actually do have dedicated graphics cards. How Apple has managed to fit them and still make the monitors so slim is nothing short of incredible. But it still isn't an ideal solution either. Many iMacs have large displays with even larger resolutions. So say so you have an iMac with a 27-inch display and a Radeon Pro 570 with 4GB of VRAM. You don't have to run games in a monitor's 4K resolution, nor could you. But then again, 27 inches is too large for 1080p gaming, and the graphics card just isn't powerful enough to handle 2K. This is a very serious first world problem. The Mac Pro is actually a pretty powerful machine as far as the hardware is concerned but it's still at least a good $500 more expensive than a PC that will perform just as good for gaming. We'll put a link in the description for our guide for the best $1,500 gaming PC, just so you can compare the specs and the prices. The bottom line is, Apple simply doesn't equip their computers with the hardware necessary for gaming. This is bad in and of itself, but the whole situation is made even worse by the fact that Mac OS also isn't a popular operating system when it comes to games. For example, there are only a paltry 7,000 Mac games available on the Steam Store, while there are over 20,000 games for Windows. So even if you had the Mac Pro, you still wouldn't be able to run some games. So in conclusion, are Macs good for gaming? We're going to have to go with a big resounding no on this one. The hardware is underpowered. 
the software is counterintuitive. And even in the best case scenario, you're still getting a way worse deal than you would be if you bought a PC that performs the same. Now, to make things clear, we aren't saying that Mac is bad overall. It's an excellent product for what it was designed to do, but gaming just wasn't on the agenda. In some ways, it's not even fair to judge the Mac on how well it performs in games. It's just like Einstein said, don't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. But then again, it's still worth pointing out that this particular fish isn't running any AAA titles either. And that about does it for this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you did. We're releasing new videos every week, so stay tuned if you want to learn more cool stuff. And in particular, if you're looking for a portable gaming computer and don't want to condemn yourself to the hardware and software limitations that the MacBooks come with, watch out for our guide for the best gaming laptops. It should be up sooner rather than later. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.